So I'm going to make a modest attempt this week at trying to do a weekly vlog. Um, I don't know if that'll happen or not. I would love to have like daily sort of craft with me videos like a lot of people do. But unfortunately, I'm at a stage of life right now where that cannot happen because my work area at the moment is primarily in my dining room where my children hang out next door. So a lot of these things um, can't happen because it's just too noisy and too busy. So that being said, though, I am going to try to do at least a weekly video. Um, I may try eventually to start doing some kind of dailies if I can. But this this Monday is a snowy, cold Monday. We had a little bit of snow. I shouldn't complain because it's not that bad. But we did have a little bit of snow and it's it's supposed to warm up again on Wednesday. And what I'm working on today is I cabbage dyed this morning. I spent the morning cabbage dyeing um, this large format encyclopedia paper that I use in my journals. And so I need to fold up this large paper so that it can be put away and not be in the way. So this is like some of my very favorite uh, paper and my favorite way to dye it with cabbage because it's um it's just really nice and it gives like a very lovely blue hue um especially when you use a little bit uh, extra water on the paper when it's in the oven if the water collects in certain places you just get this lovely kind of blue to green to brown hue it's almost like a patina so it's really nice um so yeah i have to fold all this up and so i thought i would do a little bit of that in this vlog and I um I've been feeling like really inspired to vlog lately just because like I've been delving a little bit into so if you watch my videos you'll hear me from time to time talk about homeschooling so I have a three-year-old and I've decided to start homeschooling with her because um I don't really come from a place that kids go to school before the age of five. I'm sort of more of the belief like kindergarten starts at the age five and I know there's there's kind of a lot of different viewpoints there but I, I sort of feel like I like the experience that I had as a kid where you know you spend so much of your life in school that it's nice to have a bit of time where you're not in school as a kid so I like that but I'm also not you know losing a lot of like I don't know I, I'm not completely against the idea that the kids could get started earlier with a lot of things especially in this world nowadays where things are you know technology and there's a lot of competition and I don't know it all gets really overwhelming really quick but um what I am doing is I've started sort of a three-prong system for homeschooling. So one, I decided to kind of use one that is relatively commonly used. It's secular and it's very um, literature based. So it's called Torchlight and it basically provides great book lists and um, sort of an activity list that you can follow, like a schedule of um, activities from the books in the book list. And then I've also added a nature study homeschooling program called Raising Little Shoots. And it basically is like every week you study some aspect of nature. Um, it's really like, let me get the book, hold on. Oy. I would say that it's really inspired by this book unofficially just because of my knowledge of Anna Botsford Comstock so it is the handbook of nature study so this book literally will tell you everything you need to know about this world um, and then some it is a huge book as you can see and 
it it just really talks about plants, animals, insects, the earth and sky and space and everything. I mean, it's it's an incredible book. And if you're interested, I definitely recommend it. If you're interested in doing nature study with kids, it's a great way to sort of educate yourself before you try to educate kids. Um, so the other thing that I'm trying to do is get back into watercoloring and combining that with nature study and combining that with homeschooling. So that is what I'm hoping to do in the morning. So I might be able to um, do a bit of painting in my vlogs as well. And I don't know how noisy this is gonna be. This might be really noisy. I'm not sure I haven't done this before on, on camera, but um, anyways, I'm still gonna do a bit of it. So yeah, and then the third prong of my homeschooling is alphabetical. So in two week increments, we choose another letter and I just select a bunch of things that I think my daughter is interested in or things that I want her to know about. And um, we, we cover those. So it's kind of like the, with these three things, I feel like I'm covering like steam education with the torchlight. Um, as well as a lot of what I want to teach in my alphabetical weeks. And then nature study, you know, is just a really good way to create good little ambassadors to the planet, which is a really important thing for me. So that being said, those are the activities that I get up to most days. This morning, we're currently on the letter D. So we listened to Dolly Parton. And we played with paper dolls and we talked about the kinds of clothing that people wear, which is a continuation of Sea Week last week because we talked about clothing. So, um, yeah, like I find a lot of the recommendations for things to teach, a lot of them are things that I already intuitively thought about and, and have already been working with my, my child on. So, you know, Regardless of what the pandemic does to our world, I think we can't be too afraid of being able to teach our kids ourselves. I, I have huge respect for public education when the government's not terribly involved in it and we leave the decision making up to the educators as well as the curriculum. But I think sometimes things get a little complicated either because of politics or just I don't know, outside things, like not, not listening to experts who were like actually taught, you know, to be educators and to be people who should be planning curriculums. So all of that being said, um, I do think that there's a lot of different ways to learn and there's a lot of different ways to teach. So that's what we're doing. So I hope that everybody had a good in or Halloween whenever you um, may or may not celebrate we did we had a fun little photo shoot in our local graveyard and the kids were in costumes my daughter was the queen of hearts and my son was a pirate and they had a really good time we did a home scavenger hunt and I was actually very surprised um, my city is in a region that's on restriction so they recommended that nobody go trick-or-treating. And I think most people listened because um, the, I guess I, I was sitting at my, I usually, if we're home and I'm not, you know, giving out candy for some reason, which isn't often, I think we've done it a couple times because either I was sick or one of the kids was sick and we didn't want to go out and we didn't want to give out candy or be disrupted. So usually we'll just go up to my room. Sorry for the noise. Um, and we'll watch a movie and um, we'll just shut all the lights out and that kind of thing. We don't we don't do that often, but sometimes, you know, life gets in the way of of uh, Halloween, <laughs> be it the weather or just circumstances. So I sat at my desk with all the lights on. I did have some treats ready just in case that I felt like I could safely um, give out 
sort of at a distance, but we did not have a single doorbell ring. So it was interesting. I, I was really surprised. I thought there'd surely be a lot of people who just would forego the regulations and, you know, do what they want to do, but that didn't happen. So it's actually sad and good at the same time, kind of like most things this year. Um, I did want to share though, I, I've just got a bunch of unrelated things happening. So I'm just going to share them because that's what I feel like talking about. So yesterday I did a little bit of thrift shopping because I was looking for, um, jars. Um, so canning jars, I can't find them anywhere. And I needed a few just uh, to do pond study, like eco spheres. And um, I'm going to be making a terrarium with moss. And so I was lucky I found a few, but like they are sold out everywhere. Like it's insane. So I guess people are, um, they're homesteading. So <laughs> I think a lot of people are learning a lot and homesteading a lot. So I'm just going to sneak this big guy on the camera. I know he's very dark. It's hard to see what he is, but he's actually, he's a lamb, a black lamb. And he's a really lovely, high quality stuffy. And I found him, um, in, at a Goodwill and he's a Canadian made toy by a company called Binkley, who I, I need to look up, but I got him for like $3 and he is so cute and he totally like cracked me up. So yeah, that's what I got at the thrift store. <laughs> a bit of a different thrift haul. Um, and then what else have I been up to? So I've been doing a bit of spinning. I finished this yarn this week. It'll go up in the shop along with a couple new journals that I finished uh, last week that I haven't had a chance to, um, to post yet or to make videos about, but this, uh, excuse me, I'm falling asleep. This yarn, I finished um, spinning and plying this week and it's just kind of a bubbly, bobbly kind of yarn. And um, this is actually beautiful. It's hand dyed silk that I have been hoarding forever. But right now I'm in the process of cleaning, organizing and downsizing my basement because we are renovating our house and looking to probably make some changes this year. And so this is all hand dyed organic merino and this is hand hand dyed 100% silk. So I've had it for a long time and I finally used it and I'm so happy with this yarn. So that's that. Um, what else? So I've been cutting up this magazine. Um, it was just a, a book of English roses that I forget the guy's name. It's some gentleman who's very into roses and um, he's published this book about roses. And so I've just been cutting them out because I'm going to use the images for making ephemera for my journals. And so I've just kind of been fussy cutting them. I don't, uh, I don't super fussy cut like I used to where you see absolutely no white around the edges. Now I leave like a little bit of a white border because I actually really like how it looks, but also I don't want to have arthritic hands when I'm older. Because I think a lot of things that we do are way too repetitive and way too hard on our hands. So I am not looking to give myself arthritis more than I've already done so in my life of spinning, crocheting, knitting, weaving, goodness knows, writing, so keyboarding. We do, we just, we really beat up our hands in life. So it's, um, I'm actually glad that I found a new hobby in journaling because it means that I'm doing some different things with my hands. I've been, um, inspired a lot of times to do vlogs from just different YouTubers that I like, but I recently this week found a new one and I might say her name totally wrong. So I will, um, I will link her in the description box of this video. It's Yumi Kota, I believe. E-U-M-Y-C-O-T-A. I think Yumi Kota, um, Foraging Witch. And she is this lovely little, like, um, young woman and her partner 
who live in England and they're both horticulture students and it's just kind of like life vlogs and she um, answers a lot of questions about horticulture and uh, botany and permaculture and those kind of things and she just sort of lets you follow along with her life and her um, journaling. She's she's a nature, she does a lot of nature study, probably for partly for school, partly just because she enjoys the creative aspect of it. And um, so yeah, I follow, her. I've been watching a lot of her videos this week and it's been extraordinarily calming for me. I <laughs> have found it to be really relaxing while I'm sitting and working on my own journal. And it's gotten me to um, a stage of wanting to definitely get cracking on watercolor uh, painting again. So my objective is to just see what I can do over the winter to still find plants that we can study or maybe, you know, things like that aren't plants like stones and um, just different things. Like if we think about winter, what do you forage in the winter time? what can be foraged. So um, I think if you go to a beach, you could do a beach cleanup and you could maybe forage for some different pretty stones. And then you could take those stones home and you could research about what, you know, kind of environmental conditions existed where you live to create that kind of stone if it's natural and not, you know, brought in for commer from a commercial source. And you could, you know, decide like, you know, is this, um, is this stone, does it contain agate? Does it contain quartz or zinc or, you know, like different things like that. And you could even paint the stones, photograph them and make a really nice, um, stone nature study. It doesn't always have to be plants. Um, or I think you could even work a little bit from photography your own or 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 even online and, and just work on painting still doing flower studies or whatnot so I'm probably going to do things like that I got myself and my daughter both um I got a watercolor Moleskina journal and I got her a watercolor paper pad um so I think what I'll do is to try to get her engaged in that that's the plan and um yeah I keep trying to decide what flower I like better it's so hard I hate when they're back to back in a book but I have to go grocery shopping today I'm not looking forward to it. I used to love grocery shopping, but now I just kind of find it like a little bit stressful and um, annoying at times when people don't sort of act responsibly. I just try to get in, get everything I need and get out like as quickly as possible and as friendly as possible. Cause yeah, it can be a little overwhelming. It's just, I think the big problem for me grocery shopping during a pandemic is just that some people like, they didn't adjust their level of like impatience or like me, 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 now, now, now kind of. And like, so, you know, I do my best to try to like maintain that nice minimum six foot, preferably 12 foot distance. But there's people who are just sort of, you know, they need their their milk right now, so they will just shove into that milk fridge next to you and they will snatch their milk right out from under where you're trying to grab your milk. And it, it's just challenging. I also think like, you know, grocery stores, shame on a lot of them because the prices of things that are just so basic and also local have really gone through the roof. I really think there's some advantage being taken during this time and I wish there was some sort of oversight because I think in a time like this when people are still losing jobs and will continue to that food and the, and the 
permanence of food is really in question. Like we went through, you know, the shortages of everything. Um, and I think that's happening a little bit again from time to time, but it's not too, too bad where I live. Um, but I mean, I really feel for families who are lower income and they are doing their best because even for me, like, it's like, I, I really have never had grocery bills, like the ones that I'm having now. And I, I used to think, oh, it's because I'm going less often, but I'm actually not really. I was, I, I was doing like a minimum of a three week kind of stock up, but you know, I mean, there's a few changes for me that we've had um, another child since before, you know, I, my son will be a year old next month or this month, actually the end of this month. Um, I keep forgetting it's November. It's officially November. Um, so, you know, you expect that you're going to spend a little bit more, but I would say like I'm spending, I want to say like 60 to 80% more. And that makes little sense to me. And I really hope that things just kind of lighten up but I don't know I think sometimes like once you know something sort of happens it's hard to get rid of it so like once a price structure is set it doesn't go away or like once a law passes or a law gets you know pushed out it doesn't come back or you know it's really hard to kind of start things up again in the right way when they've uh, been taken from you so it is what it is though I'm really quite concerned about this winter and how people's health will endure and how how we will do because we've had a moderate um, rise in cases where I live in Canada um, I mean it's not outrageous but it's, it's high enough that it's, it's bothersome. And I think it's a combination of like, it's not high enough that people are still acting as cautiously as they were, but like it's high enough to still have legitimate concerns. So anyhow, it seems that that topic just takes over everything we try to do these days. Right. So I won't harp on it. <laughs> So I think I'm going to spend like a good amount of time doing some different things. I'm preparing right now for the, um, the next video in a, my series of sort of, um, immersed in other artists. So I have a video series. If you haven't seen it on my channel, it's there. It's called immersed and I've only done two videos, but the third one's kind of going to be happening soon. And, um, what I do is I select a letter of the alphabet and I select an artist whose name begins in that letter. And then I create a piece of artwork while I'm just immersing myself in their work, learning all about them. And, um, the theme that I've been using to create my work while being guided by the artists is my kids. So I just kind of do a piece of work that's inspired by them in the, either in the style or with the inspiration of that artist. And so I just decided who my C artist would be. And I've been studying. Other than that, I've been trying to like stay on task with podcasting. So I make a podcast with my husband called I'll Teach You Something. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. It's everywhere. Um, and so we just recorded our first episode like in a long time again, like a, a week ago now. It's it's posted. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's so hard these days to just get things done because my husband has gone back to work in the morning. He is essentially a stay at home parent and I'm a work at home parent. Um, and so that's how we are balancing right now. But like with the cost of everything going up, I, I actually just received notice this week that both my property taxes um, are going up again. And I live in a very high tax area as well as my electricity costs are being raised provincially. And I'm really grumpy about that because, you know, 
like typically with politicians, they do nothing that they say they were going to do and they do everything to make life harder for you. So, um, <laughs> That's the unfortunate experience that I've been in for a little while, but you know, it's it's like we're just trying to make sure that we we like to be ahead of the game as much as possible. So we don't want to have all of our eggs in a single basket during a, this time. And so he's working, which means in the morning I am sort of balancing homeschool work. Um, and that's enough really, but the baby has different needs than the four, the three-year-old, soon to be four-year-old. So it's, it's a lot right now. So it's time like this that I just kind of like, ha, <sighs> kick back a little bit. So I am getting on 30 minutes soon here. So I think I will cut up this flower and I will call this a day. I'm going to be going out in the cold today and I'm going to be getting groceries. And then I think I'm probably going to do a little bit more, obviously finish out my work day. And then I'm going to do a little bit more. Um, I might do some spinning or I might do some helping my husband to strip some cabinets that we are painting in our kitchen. So that's kind of the plan for Monday. So anyhow, we have reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and just, you know, watching me do what I'm doing on my desk. And uh, hopefully all the crinkling of paper didn't drive you um, to, to go run screaming from here. But...